This is the story of a boy who happens to be a social outcast but tries his best to make himself some friends. He however still finds himself surrounded by many traumatizing issues which is what led him to become a freak. Let's see how that goes down. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2017 movie My Friend Dahmer. It's time to recall, let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The film is based on a true story as it covers the life of Jeffrey Dahmer, who was a famous American serial killer who killed 17 men. He was an absolute psychopath who raped, dismembered, and cannibalized his victims. At the start of the movie, we see the man when he was in his high school days. He was a socially awkward teenager in the 80s, and then he became what he is known for today. The scene shows the teenager sitting on a school bus with, of course, no company whatsoever. As the bus moves, it passes a man who is jogging. The boy looks at the man and likes what he sees. He goes to the back window of the bus and stands there just to look at the jogger he has apparently become obsessed with. The bus driver sees him and tells him to sit back down. Dahmer does so reluctantly. The boy seems to have gotten attracted with the man as even when he gets off the bus, he keeps creepily looking at the man. Arriving home, Dahmer sees his mother Joyce who is talking to an interior decorator that is apparently going to redo their house. This man has cerebral palsy and Dahmer begins to imitate him. Joyce tells him to stop it. Dahmer is walking down the road with a bag in his hand when two kids on bikes come up to him and ask what he has. Dahmer tells them that it is the body of a dead cat and shows them. They ask what he's going to do with it and Dahmer replies he is going to dissolve it in acid. They don't believe him, so he says he will show them. He has the access to the acids because his father is a chemist. The two boys get curious and goes on to follow the boy to the shed of his father. We go on to see that Dahmer has plenty of dead animals in jars. He places the cat in the jar and explains to the boys that his father is a chemist, though the acid he has is pretty weak, so it'll take about a month to dissolve it fully. One of the boys asks him why he does this and he tells him, I like bones, they interest me. He explains to them that he loves seeing what is inside the bodies of different creatures. The other boy calls bullshit on Dahmer's claims, saying that the jars probably have nothing but muddy water in them. Dahmer then takes one of his jars outside and smashes it on the ground, spraying acid and dissolved animal on the ground. The boys gag and flee, calling Dahmer a freak. Dahmer has dinner with his mother, his father Lionel, and his younger brother David. The dinner is frantic, with everyone talking over each other. Dahmer tries to take a chicken leg but is told to give it to his brother despite his preference for dark meat. Dahmer asks his father if he could get stronger acid to use and his father says he'll see what he can do. David notices that the chicken meat is red and thus not cooked through and his father confirms it. Joyce is less than happy, thinking they are rejecting her cooking and lays down the law. New house rule, we eat our mistakes, Joyce says and the dinner continues. As dinner goes on, Dahmer's father makes it abundantly clear to him that he wants him to be way more social than he actually is. In class the following day, John makes a scene in science class and is forced to sit with Dahmer. Dahmer eyes a fetal pig in a jar. In the hallway, he is bullied by the other boys but does not retaliate at all. At lunch, Dahmer speaks to one of his only friends about a concert of a band they both like. A senior makes an announcement for prom while Dahmer's friend is attacked by a bully. We then go on to see that he has stolen a preserved animal from the school and has brought it to his father's lab. At home, Dahmer watches his parents fight. His mother claims she is going back to work while his father says she just got out of a mental hospital and is in no condition to do so. David also witnesses this and Dahmer confronts him, saying their parents just fight sometimes. We see Dahmer at band practice. Afterwards, Dahmer leaves and sees his friend, only for two bullies to attack him. The friend calls out to Dahmer, hoping to deflect attention, but Dahmer just walks away, not wanting to get hurt himself. Lionel returns home and asks David where everyone is. David tells his father that he doesn't know where his mom is and Jeffrey has been in his lab for hours. Lionel drags a trash can to the shed and bursts in while Dahmer is working. He starts grabbing the jars and throwing them into the trash despite his son's protests. Lionel tells his son that enough is enough and that he needs to be more social and more active in his life. Lionel tells him that he intends to destroy the shed for good. Dahmer is worried at the revelation that his father intends on shutting down the shed, the only place where he apparently has fun. The next day while he is at school, he tries to follow his father's advice and makes his way to the school ground. As he stands on the ground now knowing what to do, Dahmer is approached by Lloyd Flagg, the school's drug dealer. He tries to sell Dahmer some weed. Dahmer seems open to it and searches his pocket and pulls out a bag. Fig asks about it and Dahmer says he collects roadkill but is trying to quit. Fig says he can help him with that if he wants and says he'll see him around. Lionel lives up to his promise and tears down the shed. Dahmer digs through the wreckage and recovers a few animal bones. 
Rolling the bones around his hand, Dahmer sits out by the road and watches the jogger run by, watching him intently. In his room, Dahmer is confronted by his father who apologizes for his rash behavior involving the shed. Lionel explains that he sees a lot of himself in his son and it's the parts he doesn't like, such as his introversion. He just wants his son to be more social, to have more from life than he did. Lionel presents his son with a gift, some weights so he can work out and maybe get a girl's attention. As his father leaves, Dahmer scoffs and pushes the weights under his bed. However, to satisfy his father, he does start working out. He, however, still hasn't given up on his interests as we see Dahmer in the woods making a rock trap with a stick, rope, and bait. He waits for a squirrel to go underneath and pulls the rope, crushing it. The next day in history class, Dahmer is asked why history is important. He says he doesn't know. The teacher presses him, and Dahmer continues to say he doesn't know, eventually making up a voice to say he doesn't know, as if he was mentally retarded, getting a brief laugh from the class. He thinks that it could come in handy in making friends, so when he is walking in the hallway after the class, he starts making weird gestures and noises. The boy is so invested that he goes on to pretend to have a seizure to make everyone laugh, and it works. However, the bell rings and everyone runs away as the boy finds himself alone on the school floors. It ends up becoming an everyday thing, and one day, when he is having lunch alone, a group of teenagers who find him hilarious, they go on to invite him to sit with them during lunch. They are Neil, John Durf, and Mike. They tell him that they think his little outbursts are funny, and they want to make a Dahmer fan club. Dahmer smiles, glad to be getting attention, and perhaps even friends. In the library, Dahmer begins to make noises. A teacher hears it and proceeds to blame other students for the disturbance, never suspecting Dahmer. Later, the boys join Dahmer, spazzing out in the hallway. At home, Dahmer tries to tell his mother that he has friends coming over. Instead, he sees Joyce rifling through her bag for cigarettes and pills in a manic state. Dahmer asks why she is doing that, and he thought that she stopped taking those pills. He asks if she is going back to the doctor, but she scoffs at that, saying he just told her what to do, just like Dahmer is doing to her right now. In his room, Dahmer begins to hyperventilate, freaking out that his family is slowly falling apart. When John and Neil arrive, he shuts the door and claims his mother is sleeping and cannot be disturbed. When Neil asks if Liz, an alumnus of their high school, still lives on Dahmer Street, they go there. Neil knocks on her door and pretends to be a reporter for the school paper. He then asks her how it feels to know the best years of her life are behind her. Insulted, the girl slams the door in his face. John breaks down in laughter. At school, John is drawing when a girl asks him, Is Dahmer your muse? John doesn't know how to respond. The girl says maybe John could draw her sometime, and he agrees. Dahmer says he could draw the girl and tells her to lie down on the ground as he makes a chalk outline around her to the laughs of the class. Later that day, John, Mike, and Dahmer go fishing. John notes that if they happen to catch anything, they have to throw it back given its small size. Dahmer catches a fish, so John gives him a knife to get it off the line and back into the water. Instead, Dahmer stabs the fish several times, cutting it open. A shocked John asks why he did that. He, of course, goes on to tell him that he just wanted to see what was in there. John, though horrified, just tells Dahmer to get rid of it. Luckily for Dahmer, his friends still do not see it as a red flag. Later at school, John, Neil, and Mike are trying to think of an epic prank for the yearbook. Dahmer speaks up and says he has an idea, that he should be placed in every club photo despite the fact that he is in none of them. John and the group think it's a brilliant idea. Dahmer is placed in every photo. While everyone smiles, he has a flat, monotone look on his face. John comes over one day to hang out with Dahmer. Unfortunately, Lionel and Joyce are fighting and take no heed that their son has a friend over. Joyce even incorrectly calls John by a different name. Dahmer is embarrassed by his parents' behavior and John quickly leaves. We also see the boy still stalking the jogger secretly. One day, when they are out, it turns out that he is Mike's family doctor. Dahmer tells the other boys about his jogging routine, and they are a little shocked at the fact that Dahmer knows this. When Dahmer comes home, he sees his parents fighting again, and this is when he starts drinking. As time goes by, he becomes an alcoholic and comes to school reeking of alcohol. One day, they go on a school trip and he gets Charlie as his roommate, who happens to be the only black boy in his class. Dahmer begins to ask questions about how different they may be on the inside, then stops when he realizes he is getting too weird. Despite this, Dahmer is able to get John, Mike, and Neil, and a few others into a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity the next day. Claiming to be school reporters from their high school paper, Dahmer arranges a meeting with the aide to the vice president. Amazingly, the group is able to cross paths with the VP, getting a few minutes to talk with him. 
The VP asks the group what they want to major in after high school. When he gets to Dahmer, he replies, biology. When Dahmer gets home from this amazing trip, his father lets him know that he might be divorcing his mother, and that breaks Dahmer. On top of that, he can't stop thinking about Dr. Matthews, the jogger. He fakes a cold and goes to the doctor. When the doctor is examining his hernia, he is weirded out to see that the boy has an erection. Back at school, the yearbook photos come in and Neil and John laugh at Dahmer being in every single one. However, a teacher notices him and literally uses a sharpie marker to blot him out of the photos. Later that day, he again sees his parents fighting over custody and it takes a toll on the boy. On the other hand, his supposed three friends are talking to a boy who tells them that they should be hanging out with Dahmer as he makes their group interesting. This is when John, Mike, and Neil decide to do one final spaz incident with Dahmer as a means to go out with style. They get a bunch of people to chip in to pay Dahmer to do it and a classmate to film it. Dahmer agrees to do it. On the way to the mall, he quickly downs several beers, surprising and concerning John. The following night, Jeffrey fantasizes about having a physical relation with Dr. Matthews' corpse. He starts stalking Dr. Matthews with a baseball bat, but never goes through with attacking him. Jeffrey's father moves out while Jeffrey is away on a field trip. After the trip, Jeffrey makes some attempts to stay connected to his friends, such as bringing a date to the prom, but ultimately drifts away from them. At graduation, Lionel hands Jeffrey the keys to the family Volkswagen Beetle, which he would later use to commit his first murder. Unbeknownst to Lionel, Joyce leaves Ohio to live with relatives in Wisconsin, taking Dave with her and leaving Jeffrey completely alone. That evening, Durf spots Jeffrey walking home alone with blood on his fingernails. Durf offers a ride to Jeffrey, finding him living alone with no plans for the future. Durf tells him that he is leaving for college the following day and offers him his drawings of Jeffrey, which he declines. He menacingly invites Durf inside for a beer, but Durf turns him down. As Durf walks back to his car, Jeffrey picks up a baseball bat and is about to strike him with it, although he later puts it down. As Durf gets in the car and drives home, he notices the bat. Jeffrey never has contact with his high school friends again. The next morning, Jeffrey drives around and picks up a hitchhiker, Stephen Hicks, from a concert. The closing credits note that Hicks was never seen again and that Jeffrey Dahmer admitted to killing 17 men when he was finally arrested in 1991. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.